Hey everybody, it's been a while since I put up my last video and I've done quite a few things outside in the gardens as well as some th things inside so I thought I'd show you all of them and maybe I'll make this my week one of my 2016 garden. Uh, it would be fitting since a couple days ago we ate something out of our garden and I'll mention what that is later when I show it to you. But I think that means my 2016 garden has officially begun. Here is my front garden. As you can see there's not much in it because it is still early May and so all of the annuals that would go in here won't be going in until probably around the last frost date which for my region is around May 15th but there is still a change since last time you saw it I covered what had originally been a layer of mulched leaves with a layer of uh, topsoil mixed with mushroom compost that I got from a little village down the road from us you can see some wood shavings there and that's actually because we've gotten a few trees taken down. Uh, the two that were in the back there, um, as well as another one behind. And we've also taken down some branches on those two trees in front of me, so that as the sun is coming across the sky, which it comes along there because we're south facing. The garden should get more of that sun because the branches are gone. Lastly, you may have spotted this plant right here. This is my lovage plant, which is a perennial. There's actually a funny story with the lovage because I had put it in last summer and then uh, in the fall when I was putting my garden to rest, I decided that I would rip it up um, and then I rototilled the front garden, added the mulched leaves that you guys know were there, um, and then this here I covered it with the uh, mushroom compost topsoil. So I was really surprised when the lovage came back up, but it did. It survived rototilling, being smothered. It's clearly a very persistent, hardy perennial. Next to my front garden, I have these three 25-gallon potato bags. They're actually called grow bags, but this particular size is considered to be good for potatoes. And I got these from Basie's, which I've gotten a couple of my gardening implements from, and I, I tend to like them, so I decided to get these potato bags, and I'm going to be growing potatoes. So as you can see, I planted them in some mushroom compost topsoil and I just covered the sprouts that were on the, potato, on the seed potatoes. Um, and then as they grow, I'll, cover, I'll put in more and more of the mushroom compost topsoil and I'll unroll the sides of those bags so that eventually it'll be full and they'll be probably of around two feet of soil on top of the original seed potato. These aren't vegetables, but I'm proud of them all the same. There are three bulbs. Two of them are Asiatic lilies. One of them I'm not actually sure what they are, but here's one of them. Two. And then the third is right there. I planted those probably about three to four weeks ago and they've come up and I'm really excited to see them when they bloom. Also in non-vegetable news, all these trilliums are showing up in the front of our yard. And of course the trillium is the provincial flower or the official flower of the province of Ontario. Nevelids thought they're really beautiful and so we're lucky to have a bunch of them in our yard. You'll see all the white flowers. And so they come up in spring and so it's 
nice to see them because that means spring is well underway. This is my next project for the front garden. This is a 100 foot roll of heap and goat fence. It's 12.5 gauge uh, wire galvanized with a 4x4 wire mesh. And I'm going to be using that to form trellises in the back of my garden as well as to form super sturdy, super strong tomato cages. Here we are at my back gardens and uh, you'll see here the plant that I've already harvested from. It's these chives over here. I love to have these fresh chives cut into my mashed potatoes with a little bit of butter. And so we had those a few days ago. And then over here are some garlic chives. My oregano has started coming up. And this I'm really happy about. This is my garlic that was planted in the fall. We were a little nervous about it because we had a very warm start to our winter and so the garlic actually started sprouting. So what I did was I covered the sprouts with some mulch uh, and then they came back once the spring came and now they're doing quite well. I count 10 so I hopefully we can get 10 heads of garlic from, from these plants. Here's my rhubarb, getting off to a great start. I'm going to see, see if I can get this into the light, but there's this really neat part here. This is how the leaves come up. They come up in this little cocoon type thing that's co completely covered. Obviously this has started to break open, but normally it would be completely covered. And once it's ready, uh, it starts to open and it reveals basically a leaf that's almost this size, all squished up. And after it, after it peels back, that leaf will then uh, bloom into a leaf that's almost this size and will eventually grow to be a leaf that size. Over here is where I planted my potatoes. Basically I dug a trench and then I put this cut seed potatoes in, covered it with lightly with soil just so the buds were covered. And I'll be waiting for those buds to grow longer. Um, and once they do, I'll cover them again with soil and keep doing that until I can actually start killing the plant. This is lemon balm. This is really nice because you just rub it. Rub it and smell your finger and it's this amazing smell. More potatoes. More potatoes. These ones are early potatoes so I'm hoping to get them around July. And these ones are main crop potatoes, so they should come a little bit later. This is my asparagus patch. Um, I was really pleasantly surprised a couple days ago when I actually found some asparagus in it. Because earlier this spring, I have been watching it, watching it, and expecting it to come up since my rhubarb has come up. And it just wasn't coming up, so I was afraid that uh, my one-year-old crown that I planted last year might not have survived, but a couple days ago I was here and suddenly there were spears jutting up from the ground, so that was really exciting. Here's a close-up of two spears that are coming up. Uh, to give you an idea of just how quickly these uh, asparagus spears can grow, these two were just coming up from the ground um, yesterday. Like they were, I think, only about this tall yesterday. So between yesterday and today, they grew about this much. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on my asparagus from day to day to make sure that I don't miss the time to harvest. Here is another one, and two more 
there. And two more here. There's one taller one, and then one smaller one right here. Of course, I'll have to really wait and see uh, to see if I can actually harvest anything this year. This will be the second year for my asparagus ground, and usually they say that second year, if you harvest, harvest very sparingly because the asparagus plants need time to uh, get a bunch of energy stored and be able to establish itself in the environment. So um, whether I can actually harvest any uh, remains to be seen. Rembrandt's found a stick. Rembrandt! 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 Rembrandt, look what I've got! Oh, Rembrandt loves sticks! Good boy. Hey, hey, out of the garden! He's good. He listens when I tell him not to go in the garden. Next to the asparagus area uh, is a part of the garden which has stumped me for the last couple of years because as you can see, it is in partial shade for quite a lot of the day, although I would say it gets at least three to four hours of sun. But a lot of uh, vegetable plants need more than that to be able to produce. So I did quite a bit of research over the winter on uh, edibles that grow well in shade or at least produce in shade. And I found out that there are quite a few fruit bushes that can actually produce in shade. So here is one of my fruit bushes. This is a gooseberry. As you can see, there are two sticks here. Um, and they have started to get some new growth. Uh, they're one-year-old plants that I got shipped to me from a um, cold hardy fruit breeder down in southwestern Ontario. I did plan on getting two more gooseberry bushes to go all the way down to where the asparagus starts, but because the fruit bushes are kind of pricey and gooseberries don't need other plants to be able to pollinate, I thought I'd first try it with one, see how it does, and then um, later add add more if, if this plant is successful. This is a current bush, again one year old plant, just starting to have some growth. And similarly to the gooseberries, I plan to get some more current bushes to fill the rest of the space um, once I can see that this current, this current bush is able to succeed in this location. Here we have two elderberry bushes, uh, and the reason I got two, they do need more than one plant to be able to produce fruit. And here is a row of hascap berry bushes. Hascap berries are somewhat similar to blueberries in taste, um, and but they can do fairly well in shade. I ended up getting a package of three from a gardening conference I went to and then ordered uh, one more from the fruit bush breeder down in southeastern, southwestern Ontario. Whether these will succeed, I'm not sure because the three that I had from the gardening conference I had inside for a while until the snow was melting and the, I could work the dirt and unfortunately I didn't water as, me, as much as I should have and they are kind of droopy so hopefully they will recover. Here is my indoor setup in my basement. It's sitting on a ping pong table and one half is just my work area where I plant and so you see I have my bags of potting soil. I have another 200 plug um, 
planting tray that I'm going to be planting tonight. And here I have a heating pad that my dad and I uh, built with plywood, styrofoam, um, drywall, vinyl cover, and LED rope light. So here's one 200 plug tray and it's all my green. So I have kale, um, summer savory, mint, edible chrysanthemum, golden purslane, orac, arugula, radicchio, bok choy, carrots, and lettuce mix. And actually those are all cold weather crops and can, and can stand um, a frost, so I can actually put them outside soon. In this other 200 tray, I have a bunch of different flowers as well as some of my herbs. So echinacea, zinnia, sunflower, marigold, another type of sunflower, another type of marigold, nasturtium, petunia, amaranth, poppy, sweet pea, Thai basil, basil, and parsley. Uh, so as you can see, there are some areas where uh, not a lot of seedlings have come up. So I'm going to be going over those again and uh, reseeding some of the some of the spots just to see if they'll come up in the next week. Here are my red onions. Uh, these two squares were planted um, probably about a month ago. These were planted probably two, three weeks ago, and then these were planted a week or two ago. And then these will be planted in a few days. So I'm hoping that the red onions will mature at different dates as well. Over there are my uh, strawberry plants, which right now I'm not growing for myself because I don't have the space for it. I'm going to be planting, or I'm going to be building some more raised gardens later this summer, but um, these two uh, will be grown for my grandmother because I'm planting this little saddlebag planter that I'm going to give her to put on, on her balcony at her retirement home. These are tomatoes and peppers. Uh, I have baked tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, uh, sweet bell pepper, and hot pepper. Back there you see my peas on my right, which really need to go outside, but I need to build my trellis first. And then on the left there's broccoli. And then these are some fruit seeds that just don't seem to be coming up. I already got rid of the other fruit seeds that I had planted because they just weren't coming up. I think unfortunately I didn't keep them as watered as much as I should have. So that completes week one of my summer 2016 garden. I hope you guys enjoyed that little update. Uh, I'll definitely be planning on doing some more, uh, hopefully every week, uh, in addition to other videos that I have planned for you guys. So I hope you guys will tag along with that and please feel free to uh, leave a comment, let me know what you guys are enjoying, if you have any questions, and as always, uh, please like, subscribe, and share if you have any friends who might be interested in gardening videos. So I'll see you guys later, and uh, happy gardening!